Alright, so what I want to do in this video is look more closely at the geometric meaning of the average value of a function. Okay, so suppose that I have a function, something like that, between two point A and B. Then its average value will be somewhere between, I don't know, something like this maybe. This would be F average if my blue line here is the function y equals f of x. And we've defined the average value in the previous video mathematically. f average will be given by 1 over b minus a times the integral between a and b of f of x dx. Okay, well what does it mean geometrically? So one way to understand it is to multiply both sides of this equation by b minus a. So I get that b minus a times f average is equal to the integral between a and b of f of x dx. And then I can interpret both sides geometrically. So the right hand side here, so I'm going to assume that f is a positive function in this video, but you could do the exact same uh, reasoning for arbitrary functions. So if f is positive, then the right hand side here is the area under the curve. So in my picture here, this would be something like this. But on the left hand side here, I have a different interpretation. This is the area of a rectangle of width b minus a and height f average. Right, so in the picture here, this is this would be something like that. So the average value, another way of understanding the average value is 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 the following. So it's uh, the average value of the function is going to be the height such that the rectangle here has the exact same area as the area under the curve of the function. So that's another way to understand the average value of a function. And it leads us to a beautiful theorem, which is the mean value theorem for definite integrals, which, as we'll see, is closely related to the mean value theorem that we've studied in the previous semester. So here's the statement of the theorem. So the mean value theorem for definite integrals is the statement that if f is a continuous function on some closed interval a to b, then there must exist a point c on, in this interval such that the value of the function at c is exactly equal to the average value of our function. And that makes sense, right? If I have a function here defined between two point A and B, then the average value will be somewhere in here, I don't know. And the statement here is, is saying that there must be a C such that the value of the function at C is exactly equal to this average value. And that makes sense as long as the function is continuous and it cannot jump over its average value. And geometrically, what the mean value theorem is saying is exactly the same thing as we saw in the previous slide. If you multiply both sides by b minus a, what it is saying is that there must exist a c such that the rectangle with width b minus a and height f of c has the exact same area as the area under the curve. There's always such a c, and of course f of c here is just going to be the average value of the function. Okay, that's really cool. I don't want to apply the mean value theorem to problem solving in this video. We'll do some examples in class. What I want to do now is give you the proof of the mean value theorem because it's pretty neat and it relates it to the mean value theorem that we studied in the previous semester. Okay, so how can I prove this statement? So let me start by stating what the mean value theorem that we saw in the previous semester is. So the mean value theorem that we saw was the following statement. If I start with a function, say g of x, which is continuous on a to b, and we also needed to assume that it's differentiable on a to b. Then the statement of the mean value theorem was the statement that the slope of the secant line of the function between a and b is ex uh, there must exist a c on this interval such that the slope of the tangent line at c, at g of c, will be exactly equal to the slope of the secant line of our function. So in other words, there must exist a c in this interval, yes, again the battery is low, awesome, will survive. There must exist a c in this interval such that the slope of the tangent line at this point, so g prime of c, is exactly equal to the slope of the secant line which has the following expression. Okay, so this is what we know. How can we use that to prove the mean value theorem for definite integrals? So the idea is really cool. So what we'll do is consider the following function. I'm going to call it capital f of x, which is the integral between a, of a and x 
of f of t dt, where f here is an arbitrary continuous function on a to b. Now first you need to check that this function f of x satisfies the assumptions of the old mean value theorem, but it turns out it does. If you assume that little f of t is continuous, then capital F of x will also be continuous, and it will also be differentiable. So that's good. Now what mvt is saying, the old mvt, is saying that there is a c in our interval such that capital F prime of c will be equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a over b minus a. But then what is this? Well, I can just replace using our definition of capital F of x. This will be the integral between a and b of f of t dt minus the integral between a and a of f of t dt divided by b minus a. But then, of course, the second term here is always 0 regardless of what the function is because I'm integrating from a to a. So I end up here with the statement that this, the right-hand side, is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral between a and b of f of t dt, which is, of course, just the right-hand side of my statement. But what about the left-hand side? So I have capital F prime of c, but we know, so let me change color to make it clear. So let's try to evaluate the left-hand side. So we know that by the fundamental theorem of calculus, if I calculate the derivative of this function here, what will I get? I'll get d dx of the integral from a to x of f of t dt. And we all know very well by now that this will just be f, little f, of x. So in other words, capital F prime of c here is really just little f of c, which was the left-hand side of the statement. Therefore, it follows that f, there must exist a c such that f of c is equal to 1 b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of t t t, which is exactly the statement of the mean value theorem for definite integrals. So that's really cool. So the statement here, the, the lesson here of this proof, is that this is not really a new theorem. It's a consequence of the old mean value theorem, but it's a new formulation. So instead of thinking in terms of secant lines and tangent lines, here we're thinking in terms of we're thinking in terms of integration, so we're thinking in terms of area under the curve and area of rectangle. But the two theorems are really the same, which is why they're both called mean value theorems.